Hi, sweetheart. How have you been? I've been all right. How are you? Oh, not too bad. I'm going to stare at you for a minute. Okay. How are you feeling? Doing okay. Do you want to see me from the side or something? Now that you mentioned it, yes. Is this in frame? Yeah. Okay. Well. Yep. Well. <laughs> is it different? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. I'm very excited to do some before and after stuff. Okay, awesome. Um, what have you been up to? <laughs> oh, you know, the surgery in Argentina, just, you know, usual. Sure, yeah. How far back should we rewind for, for people? Because we, we knew that you were going to do that. Mm-hmm, yep. How did it go? Well, do you want me to go over what the procedures were that went into it? Yeah, you could re we could rebrief. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you could... Rebrief? Rebrief. I'll take it. Yeah, why not? So, I mean, FFS is sort of like an umbrella term for various surgeries. So, some include various surgeries, some include certain other ones. But anyway, what mine had was I had my hairline advanced just a little bit. Because not like my hair was receding a whole lot, but hey, why not? Sure. I had my brow recontoured. That's, you know, just a, the brow bone above your eyebrows, that kind of thing. Okay. I had rhinoplasty. I had the upper lip shortened by a little bit. And I had my jaw recontoured. And I had my trachea shaved. Wow. Reduced there. Yep. I think probably the upper lip shortening is the thing that I can see most easily being different. Okay. I'll take it. <laughs> Obviously, uh, we talked earlier about... How I never knew there was a brow ridge that uh -huh. dudes had that was more pronounced. And you made me touch myself. <laughs> there. Touch your forehead? <laughs> yeah. Although um, otherwise it's fine too, but... So. Yeah. Uh, and, and this being a two-dimensional medium, I can't tell exactly. Well, okay, here. Let me turn to the side so you can see. Yeah, it's pretty smooth. Yeah, but you, you can see there's like no bump yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. So, wow. how are you feeling physically? I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, I still have some, I guess, a little bit of swelling in, I think, my jaw a bit. Um, and I have some stitches that still have to heal up. Oh, really? I don't see any stitches. Well, okay, under my nose, I don't know if they'll show up on camera, mm. but there's some under my nose from what okay. that's where they did the incisions for, oh, yeah. for that. And then for my hairline, you can see up there and up there in wow. the corners. And those are those the dissolving kind? No, but they, those stitches have been taken out, but the scars still need to heal up. Okay. However, I do have some dissolving stitches in my mouth because, and I should have just realized this earlier, when they went to do work on my jaw, they went in via my mouth. So I have stitches running along the inside of my lower jaw here, Ooh. just outside that row of teeth. Okay. I mean, they don't hurt, or e even after surgery, they didn't hurt. But okay. what was tough, though, is that being that there's stitches, it's sort of like has a, having a thistle garden in your mouth. Hmm. So, like, food could totally get stuck in there, and then Gross. you're trying to poke your tongue in there to, like, Ooh. fish the food out. Yeah. But no. you're like, wait, is that a stitch, or is that just food? So you've just been drinking a lot of milkshakes? Well, I did have like softer foods the first few days and so on. Yeah. So you are a fan of uh, chronology. Why don't you rewind to, I don't know, the airplane and tell okay, people yeah. what happened? So I got to give big props to my friend Andrea. Uh, she's Buttermilk Pecan on Twitter. And she went with me to Argentina. How great is she? She is the greatest. That is how great she is. Yeah. She went with me to Argentina in part because my parents expressed no interest in doing so. No. And I had a hunch it would be pretty scary to go alone. And so I was very, very grateful to have her go with me. What Spanish words did you know a month ago? Mostly the ones from Sesame Street. Sure. So, gracias, agua. I was incorrectly taught hasta manzana from Sesame Street. Because what they does that taught... mean? Until Apple. 
<laughs> what did that? What What did you think that means? Well, they taught us hasta mañana, which is until tomorrow, and manzana, which is apple, on the same day, and that's ridiculous to do for a four or five year old. <laughs> oh my god! Says me. So, so have you been wishing um, Spanish people like go to apple? I'm sure I did for a couple weeks. Oh my god, that is the best ever. <laughs> Did you try to study to speak to Argentinians, or did you just uh, expect not to have to talk it? Well, I didn't really study it, and my my hope was that my experiences is, is that we'd be able to get by, that it wouldn't be too arduous. Um, it so happens that as a graduation present for college, my my family went on a trip to Italy, and there, for example, most people speak Italian, but most people speak enough, also speak enough English words that you can order in a restaurant and okay. stuff like that. So I was, I was kind of figuring, well, I'll be all right. Um, plus, I had sort of a hierarchy of things to tear my hair out over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I guess learning Spanish was sort of closer to the bottom of the list. So okay. I didn't really do a lot of, with that. Um, Andrea, on the other hand, uh, she took... Spanish in I think for a year in high school or maybe two years uh, and then she took French in college so she actually knows French better than Spanish although it's been many years since either of those so okay um, the, tr the short of it is that people in Argentina don't really speak much English oh. like the impression I got is that um, they're starting to teach it in schools so like I so you could look out the window to an urchin on the street and flip him a, a quarter and say, bring me a, a large goose. But a, an adult you wouldn't be able to do that with. Something like that, yeah. Okay. So at one point, my earbuds were busted. And so I thought, well, she gets more. So I went to a local electronics store to get some. And I went to the register. And fortunately, the clerk was like 22 or something, probably mm. a college job. And so I was able to understand, like, how much does this cost? And... That kind of thing. Hmm. But, uh, sort of but between Andrea's knowledge and lots of hand gestures, we got by. Okay. So anyway, it was a 10 and a half hour flight direct from Dallas, which is super nice. Hmm. Not that it was 10 and a half hours, but that it was just a nonstop flight. Right. The only thing I forgot to pack was my glasses. So <sighs> that was not great, but <laughs> I made it through. Do you have your glasses nearby now? Uh, No, not really. I can okay. get them, though. Just sort of curious. They're my old boy glasses. They're not very fashionable at all. What the fuck? It's been years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you landed in Buenos Aires. And what was nice is that uh, the, the clinic made arrangements for basically all of our transportation, medical-related transportation. So there was a car at the airport to pick us up. Ooh, cool. There was a guy holding a sign saying Ashley last name on it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I feel important. That's awesome. And then so we go up to his car and it's like a 1988 VW Golf. And it's like, oh, we, we're two Americans with enormous suitcases. But OK, mm -hmm. we'll make it fit. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, hey, I can't look a gift driver in the mouth or sure. whatever. And uh, yeah, it took us to the apartment. And turns out Argentinian drivers are creative. Maybe a nice way of putting it sort of the. The lines on the road, those are mere decoration. Oh, the stop okay. signs, those are a suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, most street corners or, or four-way crossroads, they have no stop signs, no traffic lights. Wow. It's basically whoever gets into the intersection first goes and the other people will break hopefully in time. Wow. Yeah. So that was a bit wild. But anyway, the apartment was very nice. Uh, we went to... We found it through Airbnb, through a nice fellow named Tincho, who spoke great English, which is awesome, mm. because otherwise that'd be yet another person that we'd be doing hand gestures with, because <laughs> we're dumb Americans and didn't learn enough Spanish. <laughs> we got in on the Tuesday morning, and our original plan was that the surgery would be on a Thursday. So we'd have kind of a day in case our flight got messed up or mm. whatever. Turns out that Thursday... Where it's supposed to be is the Thursday before Easter, and this being a South American country, Easter is a big thing. Me being someone who doesn't celebrate religious holidays personally, I didn't even notice. Yeah. 
So that was my bad. But all they did was they just moved up a day to the Wednesday. So that's fine. The only downside though is that the flight down left it, what was it, I think 9 p.m. and then landed like 8 a.m. And so it's an overnight flight and invariably you kind of sleep a little bit, but you don't get a whole night's sleep mm. on these things. So, and then the next morning, morning of surgery, um, they had a cab sent to pick us up at 7.15 in the morning. So that wasn't really a full night's sleep either. So that probably wasn't super helping things going into it, but... What, did you feel more nervous than you would have if you had slept well? Well, going into the trip... I was kind of nervous in the weeks preceding it. But on the day of surgery, I wasn't actually nervous, which surprised me because I expected to be nervous. Okay. Maybe you were prepared. Well, prepared and also it was, it was something I just researched the heck out of it. That mm -hmm. I basically compared all the FFS surgeons I could find and I read up on testimonials for Dr. DiMaggio and... I mean, this guy does this all the time, so yeah. I knew it was going to be fine. Awesome. So I should back up a little bit that we got there on the, I guess, the Tuesday. Surgery was on the Wednesday. That Tuesday afternoon, I met with Dr. DiMaggio to talk through sort of some last minute stuff. And he asked me about some of my preferences for like what I was looking for. Oh. For instance, for moving my hairline forward, there would be like a scar going across the front here. And he said that either he could do it at the hairline or like a centimeter into the hairline. The difference being that if it's at the hairline, they might be able to nudge the hair a bit more forward. If it's, but it's, if it's into the hairline, it's more easily concealed. Okay. Yeah. So I picked the one that's slightly into the hairline because my hair hadn't receded a whole lot. So mm. it wasn't a super big concern. Right okay. Yeah. And they also asked me, like, what type of nose I was looking for, for instance. I thought these questions would have happened earlier. Well, I mean, they're easier in person. And also, Ooh. it's not like he has to buy a new scalpel depending on what kind of nose I want. All right. How did you describe what kind of nose you wanted? Well, I was saying that uh, some women have a nose that has sort of a slight upturn at the end. And I kind of like that. Yeah. So I mentioned that to him. And he's like, so he said, so would you prefer that type of thing with more of a natural look or more of a Barbie look. I was like, <laughs> I would like the natural look, please. <laughs> yeah, and then he said, don't have anything to eat or drink after 10 p.m. the night before surgery. And then uh, I had to go into surgery. Yeah, it was the next morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They sent the cab for me. I went to the clinic, which is about two miles from our apartment. Andrea went with me. I brought my bear Panic because she can keep me safe. She's What's... a good bear. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you said a, a bear Panic. Oh, no. And I don't know what that is. I don't know either. That would be <laughs> scary. <laughs> I mean, and then the usual had to change it to a, was it a smock or whatever those fancy doctor hospital yeah, gown. Yeah, sure. Hospital gown, yeah. Yeah. And it turns out I got to the operating room and... I forgot to take out my piercing, so I took those out, and that was fine. And Dr. DiMaggio was very nice about him. He was saying, for instance, as as they were just about to start surgery, like, he was saying to me, remember my voice, because when you wake up, you might be a little disoriented, but remember my voice, and then you will remember where you are and what's going on, and so on. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, I thought that was a nice touch. Going into it, I mean, he had said the day before that it would be about like around a seven hour surgery. So starting at like 8.30, finishing around 3.30, give or take, but it might go a little longer depending. Mine actually went until about 4.30. So it's an eight hour surgery. Okay. Is that because of complications or he was just being careful? Well, apparently my sinus cavity is slightly bigger than average person's. Ah, that must be why you're so smart. Because you get more oxygen to your brain. But apparently that meant that he had to be just sort of more delicate in some of his cuts so that, okay. I don't know, it wouldn't bust it up or whatever. So I, they, they put me on the gurney thing, wheeled me up to the hospital room, and Andrea was there, which was very nice. And 
Obviously, I'm pumped full of painkiller, but nonetheless, I was impressed that it didn't really, I wasn't in a lot of pain. That yeah. sometimes pain supersedes painkillers. <laughs> but was it like they show in the movies where you're just seeing like ceiling tiles go back and then concerned people looking over you and uh, feeling a oh, panic? Oh, like in Robocop where they just turn them into a robot? Good example. I think one of the first things I said to Andrea when I saw her after surgery was, I feel like Robocop after they did surgery on him. That's cute. I think I was pretty cogent at the time. Because I remember getting into the elevator and going up the stairs and them telling me to like scooch over from the gurney thing over to the hospital bed and... Because I'm, I'm told that people often don't remember a lot, a lot but yeah. I, I think I remembered most of it. Um, and what is the Spanish word for scooch? <laughs> I don't know, but fortunately Dr. Jumanji spoke enough English that he, I think he said something like, move your ass over. Okay, uh, good. Yeah, I was like, oh, I understand what those words mean. <laughs> it was a little scary waking up for a moment because I had packing in my nose. Yeah. Which, of course. Like a cotton, a cotton ball thing? Basically, except like, it's like having six cotton balls in each nostril or yeah. something. It, yeah. At any rate, um, it so happens that one of my phobias is to is of drowning. Okay. And so when I first woke up, I couldn't breathe through my nose, and so I started to kind of wig out a little bit. Mm, yeah. But that's when Dr. Maddie says, it's okay, it's okay, you're in the hospital, breathe through your mouth, you'll be all right. And then I kind of like got it together. Awesome. Yeah. I should also add that all this time... They had a interpreter with me. Uh, her name is Claudia. Wow. And so, for instance, when I went to see Dr. DiMaggio the day after getting there for checking the preferences and stuff, Claudia was also there. And so, even though Dr. DiMaggio spoke a decent English, um, there's sometimes some words he gets stuck on, and Claudia kind of help out with that. Um, and then Claudia was there after surgery as well. And then there was actually a medical student uh, named Koti who mm. stayed with me through the night. Oh. And um, the way Dr. DiMaggio put it is that uh, apparently Koti is like about to graduate like in a month. So she's mm. basically a doctor. But she also speaks very good English. So she took on the role of being interpreter slash. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, caretaker person. So that really impressed me because she stayed the night with me in the hospital in just on the couch next to my bed. Yeah. And I was kind of helpless at the time, so like, if I needed a glass of water or whatever, she would help me with that. And yeah. I mean, I made it through. I, I had like a big bandage around my head, uh, like a nose splint. Um, I had some gauze bits over my neck and around my chin. It was actually kind of hard to just move a whole lot. And I also had uh, a dressing sort of over my upper lip. It was sort of like the Tom Selleck of dressings, you might say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, because like this enormous, like... Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, which actually, that dressing particularly made it tough because it was slightly taller than my upper lip. Yeah. So when they'd bring me like the dinner at the hospital, it would be harder to eat. But overall, though, I made it. Um, I remember uh, my lips were very, I guess, chapped at the time, but... That got better over the next few days. Yeah, they kept me in the hospital for that night. And then around 1 p.m. the next day, they let me go home. What did you and Kati talk about with her in the Co room the whole time? Well, Coach and I, book, was, I guess... Coty, sorry. No, it's all right. Um, I mean, by the time they wheeled me up to the room, so I guess 30 finished at 4.30 or so, and then they were still, like, checking my vitals and stuff like that. And so it was probably... I don't know, six or so before things quieted down, I guess. Mm. I mean, she and I talked a bit about, like, where she's from and what she's doing over the weekend, which she was visiting her family and so on. But there wasn't a whole lot of talking. Um, mm. It was just, it was kind of hard to talk since I had all these, like, oh, sure. bandages around my chin and stuff, which just constricted motion there. I'm mostly ignorant about facial surgery. I saw an episode of some stupid reality show about a rock star and his wife, uh, 
and their family and they both went in for some facial surgery and then when they woke up they were crying and it almost seemed like they regretted the whole thing and like wanted to take it back and wondered how you felt emotionally afterward i think i felt okay i mean i just kept telling myself okay the worst is over you just gotta make it through this next part did you take a look at yourself with all the bandages on no wow i mean i used the loo that night in the hospital but i didn't i i intentionally did not face the mirror interesting because i freaky. was i was way swollen yeah i mean like my forehead like most of it was covered with a bandage but the part that was peeking out i looked like a klingon it was like <laughs> yeah and my nose was like yeah it was like goofy and swollen my cheeks and i also had quite a bit of bruising under both of my eyes mm. Um, and that's not because they did any work specifically here, but that's just, as I understand, it's like where blood ended up pooling because of the work they did elsewhere. Okay. So it kind of looked like I had black eyes and yeah. Okay. It was only like on the second day after I got home that I maybe looked in the mirror. So give me a Yelp review of the hospital and then give me a Yelp review of the doctor. Okay. The clinic, um, I would say... I was really pleased with it. It's not, it wasn't like a full size hospital, but it was still a pretty decent sized clinic with a operating room and everything else. Mm -hmm. And um, it's run by the Seventh day Adventists. So that hardly affects anything other than that it so happens the food they served was vegetarian, which is fine okay. with me. I like vegetables. <laughs> For instance, like on that first night, the dinner was uh, milanesa, which was, that's a Spanish word for schnitzel which is basically like a breaded, I mean, it normally be veal, but in this case it was eggplant. Okay. Yeah. And overall the staff were very, very nice. Um, I really liked my, my stay there. It was, it was great. Um, and as for Dr. DiMaggio, I mean, I, I really, really pleased with his work because pain in the in the few following days was not bad. Hmm. I mean, I should offer the caveat that I've been told that my pain tolerance is higher than an average person's. Ah. But um, after I got through maybe the first 48 hours or so, the pain wasn't more than much more than like a light hangover after. So this is like two days after surgery, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd really recommend Dr. DiMaggio to anyone. Yeah. yeah. And he's a very caring person. What was the pain like at its worst point? Like if you've, if you've ever slept wrong and your shoulder's like all achy when you wake up, it was like that, but in my jaw and like in my forehead maybe yeah so it was like an ache okay not a stabbing pain no i mean generally i was i was pretty run down yeah right after surgery because like presumably all the blood in my body was in my face sure trying to repair the surgery overall though it was not a bad experience at all yeah cool. oh i should also mention uh one part from that night in the hospital that because they did a lot of work on my nose and sinus and so on. And this is kind of gross. So if, if listeners want to skip ahead to a certain part, that's fine. But um, there was, as it, as it healed, there's blood dripping down the back of my throat, which would then dry in my throat or congeal. Mm. And then, it, which I would then cough up and spit out into a bowl or something. Okay. So there's a bunch of that the night of while i was staying in the hospital which was not super fun but i mean it didn't hurt but it looked yeah. kind of like i had emphysema or something right then in part meant i didn't get a whole lot of sleep in the hospital oh um, sure and then that next day that continued happening and they said this is perfectly normal it's, that can, it's, it's a common thing and dr dimaggio also mentioned that um as he was discharging me from the hospital that i could take out the packing for my nose that evening if I wanted to. Hmm. So this would be the evening or the evening of the day after my surgery. And that was actually nice because some FFS surgeons will keep the pack in your nose for like four or five days. Oh. Yeah. But this was basically 30 hours after surgery, I had the packing out of my nose. Okay. Which is great. And you could breathe again. Well, I could breathe better. All um, right. I still had like dried blood and other gunk in my nose mm. so i wasn't allowed to blow my nose because that could like mess up the delicate tissues in my nose and stuff 
So, like, the gunk in my nose, which maybe a normal good flow could take care of a lot of it, it just kind of had to sit there, and that was mm, not super great. I'm so, very sorry. Thank you. So the first, like, couple of nights, I had to sleep with my mouth open because I could sort of breathe through my nose, but not enough to get oxygen to my body. Right. The first night at home, when I still had the wrapping thing around my head. At home in the apartment? Yes. Okay. At the apartment. I couldn't really sleep on my side because um, the stitches that go across here, it's basically like an upside down U. It kind of goes about to here. Uh. So it's like one of these things. But I couldn't sleep on my side because it pressed on those and kind of hurt, so I had to sleep on my back, which is actually okay. That that doesn't bother me much. Okay. Although I usually sleep on my side. Yeah. But uh, I distinctly remember, I guess it was the second day after surgery, so I guess the Friday morning, um, after having a full night's sleep back at the apartment, I felt a lot better. I mean, I started to feel more like myself again. Um, and so uh, the doctor gave me, uh, I guess, antibiotics that I had to take every, I think it was eight hours, and then also some prescription level ibuprofen. So like regular ibuprofen, but it was 600 milligrams, which is, I, I think, three times what a normal pill would be for the ibuprofen. Okay. But having said that, it's only ibuprofen. It wasn't too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Was that what you were expecting? I had talked with a couple of other trans women who had gone to see Dr. DiMaggio uh, in the months leading up to this. Mm -hmm. And one of them, uh, Brittany, I think she had said that she had uh, been prescribed prescription level ibuprofen. Mm -hmm. But in her case, she had also said that she had a higher than average pain tolerance. So I wasn't sure huh. if that was just because of how things worked with her or if that's just how they do it for everyone. Yeah, okay. But what was not super great in the first couple of days after surgery is that there was enough swelling around my eyes that I actually had double vision slightly. Mm. Because of the swelling, the two images wouldn't quite line up in my brain. Oh, no. I know. So I would get... It wasn't completely separate images, but they would mostly line up, but not quite, so that was kind of messing things up. Oh, okay. Plus, there's enough swelling that I couldn't put my contacts in anyway, so... Oh, sure. Andrew kind of helped me find things around and stuff like that at any point did you feel like your brain wasn't working at full capacity there were times like that yeah i mean um when i guess the night in the hospital when the anesthesia was still getting flushed out and all of that how early wasn't quite 100 percent. at one point in the evening probably about midnight or so i forgot Cody's name and then this is going to be dumb, but, like, I knew there was, like, four letters in it because I have, like, sure. a, a partial photographic memory, only uh -huh. very slightly. Okay. So I knew the four letters. I knew it started with a C. And so I was basically, like, brute forcing her name. And then, like, half an hour later, I was like, oh, it's Koji. That's what it is. <laughs> Sweet. Carl, no. Kara, no. That's funny. Well, the thing is, she spells her, her name C-O-D-Y, but she says it uh, Koji. Oh, okay. So I was getting better at the apartment and they said that one of their doctors would be coming by in a few days to look things over and one of them, i mean they made house calls including on the saturday before easter sunday yeah which is great yeah and the guy would come by with his little doctor bag like mm -hmm. those little painting illustrations and andrew's quick to pro point out it doesn't look exactly like that but it, it's so close and it's sure. got all their goodies in it yeah yeah and it was just really fantastic service that they would come check me out and I would take out or take off some bandages and such. And um, over the next uh, following days, I also had some checkups at the clinic where they took out uh, like the stitches, some of the stitches around here and some stitches around here, stitches under my nose. And uh, it, was, it was pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I was I was really pleased with how things turned out. It sounds like you dealt with a lot better than I would have. I do not have a higher than average pain tolerance. Ah. And pain and sickness are so rare for me that according to my wife, I become helpless uh, and sort of <laughs> pathetic. So I don't think she ever used the word pathetic, but I think that's how she feels. Um, and I'll just whine and roll around in bed. <laughs> oh. Don't make me think about anything. 
Yeah. Um, oh, poor Jay. Well, that's okay. I don't need FFS. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You lucked out there. Yeah. Yeah. Nor would I be able to afford it. Uh, r remind the people how much it cost you. It was um, 18k, mm -hmm. and then um, include the airfare. A couple... Sorry. Does that include the airplane? No. Does that include the apartment? For... That includes all the medical stuff, okay. all the surgery, anesthesia, hospital stay, prescriptions, follow-up visits, all. And the taxi that they arranged. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. I mean, it was 17, and then the, there's, I also opted for the option for my trachea, which is actually one and a half. Or no, I think it was 18, and then the one and a half made it 19.5. Okay. But I mean, I was the way I kind of thought, I was like, well, I sort of like bought a Honda Civic for my face. Um, <laughs> yeah. But really, there were, I mean, you were saying about how you may not have fared as well, but I, I was so, so grateful for Andrea to be there, because it, it just would have been so scary. Yeah, because there there were times when, like the first night, at home where I. Like I I needed help getting just a glass of water and she could help me with that and yeah I couldn't really remember too well like did I take this pain med or how many hours until the next oh, one oh boy yeah and she was like, you know she had her wits about her so she could, you know okay you have five more hours until the this next one you've already taken this one. Because if I had been alone, I, I just, I don't know what I would have done. In addition to bring a friend along, what would you recommend to somebody who's considering FFS? Bring comic books or regular books or what have you. Um, you can bring your iPad and things like that. I mean, try to get a place where that has Wi-Fi. That helps. Mm. Um, if you know a little bit of Spanish, that's handy. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I guess... If you're gonna do some grocery shopping, if your if your apartment has like a stove and fridge and stuff, which ours did, you want to try to do that before surgery. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, certainly, you could have the other person go out and do grocery shopping while you're all in bed and stuff, but it's easier for two people and so on. What did you eat, Mrs. I like food? Well, so most of the following days, uh, like I had. I had a bunch of, of yogurts. Um, mm. I, what? Why are you giving me frowny face for yogurts? Maybe I should ask you what did Andrea eat? Because you're in an exotic locale. Well, the thing is, there's a heavy Italian influence in Buenos Aires. Okay. So, in the same way that, like, barbecue and steak is the national thing of Texas, in, <laughs> well, or whatever. The Texas nation, sure. Yeah. In in Buenos Aires, it's like pizza and empanadas and steak. Oh, interesting. They're very proud of their beef. Like, I came across one article that was like, here's how to plan your afternoon steak so you're not too full before your evening steak. Oh, that's adorable. I know. Yeah. But yeah, you can get like pizzas on any street corner hmm. in calzones. It, it is sort of like Italy a little bit, but along with empanadas. And so we just... If Andrea hadn't been there, it really would have been scary. And I'm yeah. so glad that she did go. And um, and just, I mean, there's the support from her, but also support from other family and friends. Like um, my my brother and his fiance, they sent flowers down. Oh, wow. I know. Oh, boy. That was so sweet. Um, Ashley, I'm sorry I didn't send flowers. That's quite all right, Jay. I'm pretty broke. This will not be my first surgery, so you'll have another shot at okay, it. Okay, good. But yeah, Ashley likes flowers. They're pretty. But what was also neat is that uh, my parents called to wish me, like, happy recovery. Really? Yeah. I know. Had you told them when you were going then and how to contact you in the apartment? Yeah, I mean, okay. in probably two or three weeks beforehand, I sent out an email to my family and a couple of close friends about, like, okay, I'm going to... Argentina for facial feminization surgery, as you know, going for these dates and these dates. Here are my flight numbers. Here's the apartment where we're staying. Here's the address. Here's the the surgeon I'm going to, the clinic. You know, all that kind of information to help put their mind at ease and that kind of thing. Um, and so it turns out that the apartment doesn't actually have a landline. But what I did was I just purchased a few roaming 
minutes for my regular cell phone. Okay. So I gave out that number and I said, you can always reach me here. I think I bought like 45 minutes of roaming. So hmm. um, I'm not one to usually gab on on the phone anyway. So that I figured that should be enough for most purposes. Okay. But yeah, they called uh, like a day or two after surgery and wished me happy, rec- well, uh, speedy recovery and all that. So They didn't make up a, an awkward song about it? No. <laughs> And they okay. called me Ashley on the phone. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm starting to think maybe they're turning a the corner. I don't know. I don't know if I want to count my parent chickens before they hatch. It's a slow corner. The, it is a slow corner. they've been turning. Yeah. It's a very rounded hallway. Uh, you mentioned some other surgeries that I could send flowers for. What do you have in mind? So surgery number two is probably going to be... Gender confirmation surgery, GCS, which is some people also call SRS. Yeah. I thought you said uh, reaffirmation last time we talked about that. Oh, I mean, there's sort of different terms being bantered about, I I guess. That's the one where the penis goes away. Yep. Okay. Sweet. Testicles, too, I imagine. I should hope so. <laughs> oh, my God, that would be so gross. <laughs> God, my hair is so wacky. Well, uh, embrace it. Yeah. Make it even wackier. So that's the other thing with my hair, that they don't want me to use a, my hair dryer on the hot setting. I can do warm setting on the on the front. Yeah. Because it could, like, aggravate the wounds or okay. whatever. And they're saying it's just sort of like an overabundance of caution that even if I did it, probably not much would happen, but just in case. Are you satisfied with the results? Um, I am. I I think so. I mean, it, there's still some swelling in there. Oh, really? Where's whereabouts? Oh, you mentioned your chin a little bit. Yeah, what well, he was saying that swelling tends to subside from the top down. So, mm, and right. I, that seems to be wholly true. That my my forehead is pretty much fine. My nose is much better, although there might still be some swelling there. I can I can tell that there's still some in my chin. And jaw. Okay. And I do have some numbness in my chin and a bit on my scalp, although that's supposed to subside as well. And the double vision has gone away. Well, I should, yeah, great. Yeah. I saw some stiffness in my, I guess, upper lip and nose just because, like, healing and stuff. Uh, how British of you. I know, really. So I can I can mostly smile, but even, like, but like a week ago, I sort of looked like a zombie when I was trying to smile, so like, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so wow. even, even now i can't fully emote with my face although that is getting better okay and um i mean you're asking how much i like it and i do i've heard sort of a, a phenomenon that happens with some people who've had ffs that they're so used to how their face had looked for all those years before that their brain sort of gets like an imprint of like a shortcut of okay Look in the mirror. Oh, that's my face. That's what it looks like. Sure. And so when you get FFS, some people who have that don't notice the changes as easily because their brain's like, oh, that's my face. It looks like this. Uh-huh. Ah. Um, although I will say that the first few days after surgery, I didn't recognize myself in the mirror. Wow. And part of that, I'm sure, was the swelling because the swelling was pretty hefty okay. in the first few days. Yeah. But even now, it was only within the last week and a half or so that um, I could really like look in the mirror like, oh, well, that's Ashley. But it, the, other, the other thing, just as far as how I like it, is that I usually only see myself in the mirror, and that's sort of like a head-on thing. Uh-huh. So a lot of the changes that you might get from like a three-quarters view or whatever, I can't perceive as well. Yeah. So I kind of rely on other people to sort of help me get a, my head around how yeah. things are different and what are they saying well like that my brow ridge is just like obliterated that there's no more ridge at all there um like the the upturn in my nose a little bit and uh i can tell that like my my chin is is much rounder yeah. or less sharper sure yeah well panic did a good job panic did do a good job sounds like she's awesome. a good bear what, did you want to teach me something ladylike? Yeah. Okay. First hobby. So this is solar oil. 
And it comes in a bigger container. This is just like the travel size one. Okay. And see, you can unscrew the top, and it's got. It looks like a little nail polish brush. And you you brush this on your cuticles around your nails. And then it it helps moisturize them. And, and it's specifically for nails or cuticles. Yes, I you mean. You wouldn't want to use it on something else. Well, the thing is that with a normal like moisturizing lotion. There's a trade-off between like oiliness and or moisturizingness okay. and how easily it dries and so on. Uh. In this case, it's completely at the other side of the, the spectrum that it is oil. So if you if you were to rub down your hands, they would be oily and that'd be bad. Okay. But if you just put on your on your cuticles and stuff, then it's not so bad. What what I've actually done is I mean, I will apply it before going to bed because, hmm. I mean, some people, if they're very rigorous, will apply it like several times during the day. But for me, if I end up, say, rubbing some into my fingers and then I get some on this finger, then, oh, and I've got a little bit of oil there and that could make, squick me out from like, am I getting my keyboard dirty or whatever? Yeah, okay. <laughs> but just at night, though, it's actually, it's fine. And it, and I've been using it for about a week now, and it has helped. Like, it's helped heal up some, I call my hangnails, so that's been kind of nice. It's nice. Yeah. Solar oil. You've always I know. got something to teach me that I've never and heard of. it's from CND, which just stands for Creative Nail De Design. And you can get this at Ulta or other places. Yeah. Awesome. I know. And, oh, and I've also heard that you can use, like, I think some of you use, like, a cotton swab or something like that to apply that so you can rub it onto your nail even during the day, and you don't have to worry about getting the pads of your fingers all goofy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so then, there are jobbies. I got another hand lotion. <laughs> I know. This one is, uh, you know, daily moisturizing lotion. Okay. Yeah, I know you could kill us. I care if you care, but you better have a reason. Yeah, I do. Okay, care. so you remember you remember this guy, Seraphy? I do, in fact, yes. Yay! Okay, so the Seraphy is very nice, and that's both moisturizing and it doesn't leave you all slimy and stuff. Mm. So that's a good combination. The only downside with Seraphy is that, as far as I can tell, there's no travel size. It comes in this form factor, and that's it. So. I don't want to travel with this because I don't want it to be like accidentally pumping it yeah. <laughs> into my luggage. But on the other hand, this one from Avino is it's similar to Therapy. Um but you can get in a little like a you can get in the pumpy jobby, or you can get it in one of these kind of tappy things. A much yeah. more secure lid. Right, which is great for travel. Okay. And I actually tried a head to head with these. Yeah. To see who would win. So I put some Aveeno in my left hand and apply it onto my right arm. And I put some CeraVe in my right hand and put it onto my left arm. Sure. And your left arm was more creative than your right arm. But your right arm was better than math. <laughs> <laughs> the gist of it is that it was... I may have to do a retest to be sure, but it was pretty close. It might be a tie. It's hard to tell. Nice. All right. Yeah. And cost-wise, uh, it turns out that the Aveeno is slightly cheaper, but not a whole lot cheaper. So, uh, mostly for a form factor, this is handy for, for that. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Keep the non-faith. Uh, we will talk soon. That sounds awesome, Jake. It's great to argue with you. Bye.